l'intervention de, de Sylvia. Euh, mais euh, on va faire ces workshops en petits groupes, euh, ici, et puis ensuite euh, on décidera d'une heure de restitution du workshop, je pense vers trois heures euh, cet, cet après-midi. Mais euh, Sylvia a fait l'honneur de venir euh, de manière un peu improvisée euh, dans, à, à Milan, à l'Institut français, et je la remercie, et euh, nous allons parler je crois, cette fois, de la question de l'improvisation. Euh, donc c'est une question qui, avec Vera, nous a longtemps euh, travaillé, et notamment euh, grâce à Christophe Orbel, qui malheureusement ne pourra pas intervenir à la suite de ton intervention. Il est, lui, est, est urbaniste et, et, musée, et musicien, et il a travaillé sur toute cette question du, de saint de, de syntaxe et d'éléments et, et libres, donc la relation entre des éléments structurants et des éléments euh, d'improvisation. Et Sylvia, tu vas peut-être euh, prendre un, un angle un peu différent, tu es graphiste, euh, et célèbre graphiste, euh, et je, je crois que tu as fait un, un, un stage, un workshop, oui, je viens de passer. Je ne parle pas l'italien. C'est mieux. C'est possible. Davant de parler, il faut un peu la traduction de ce que je veux dire. Ah, c'est. Si, pour Marta. Si, Marta. Marta, c'est la ragazza de qui je parle. Nous avons chiamato, approfitato de la présence de Cynthia. A, a Milano chiedendole un intervento eh, improvvisato, giusto perché è l'altro argomento della, della, del suo intervento, perché eh, l'idea dell'improvvisazione è una cosa che eh, è molto presente nella ricerca eh, che, che, che Rudy e Vera hanno portato avanti in, in questi anni, anche eh, con il contributo di Christopher Dell, che è un Uh, urbanista ma uh, musicista uh, uh, e che lavora molto sull'improvvisazione e uh, che ha fatto per noi un concerto improvvisato all'interno della, della, della di mostra di Versailles tre, tre du vivant la presenza di vivant a Versailles e che anche ha scritto un, un libro con Rudy-Anni-Fa-Sull'Improvvisazione-In-Alcanzare-Nella-Sull'Impresa-Nella-Concezione-Urbana-Quindi-Approfittiamo-Di-Silvia-Per-Che-Lodo-Non-Vi-
So you and can you give them to me? Yeah. So we have the uh, okay. preparation. Oh, uh, okay. Experience. And uh, uh, Falling or failing. Being wrong. And transmission. So um, I'm under the still under the influence of this experience that I had. I'm just back from Lille Saint Marguerite in front of Cannes, uh, where I participated in a 10-day improvisation summer school. So um, this is exactly uh, what I'm uh, thinking about these days. So having this improvised invitation. <laughs> Uh, made me think that I could just start with the uh, uh, words that I collected in my notebook while coming here and without following, following one uh, thread. So just to give a little bit of background, so thanks for the presentation. Uh, the thing I'm doing parallel to being a designer and teaching is uh, dancing yeah. and I <laughs> practice <laughs> improv improvisation. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a professional, <laughs> just uh, an amateur, but uh, this has brought me to start using this uh, approach, especially in teaching, which has to do with transmission. Yeah. Um, and uh, usually, just to add a little bit to this introduction, uh, in Italy, I don't know if you feel the same, when you say something is improvised, it's a very negative. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is improvised. He didn't. He didn't design he didn't it. Professional. He didn't, didn't do it professionally. Uh, while I think that improvising is the only way to do exactly what is needed in that specific situation. Yeah. So the meeting we had in France was focusing on how to um, work on the transmission of improvisation because you cannot, if you think of music or dance, you cannot. Uh, tell, teach anyone exactly what to do. Because if you teach them something, this is not improvisation anymore, because you teach, they tell them exactly what they have to do in that situation. So the only thing you can do is working on preparation. So how to be ready in a specific situation where you're, where you're asked to improve, you need to improvise. You have to give a car to oh, 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 this will I mean, uh, create a chaos, you, a total you, chaos. Could you please pick uh, uh, one of these cards and uh, give it to me? May I see? Yes, yes. Okay. It's working with what is there. So, this is perfect because <laughs> why do I think improvisation is necessary? Because it allows you to work with what is there and not what you want, with what you wanted to be or ex expected to have and, and so on. Um, so it means that in, in teaching, in transmission in general, it means that you cannot have, for instance, a program until you meet the people that you have to work with, which is, as we were saying yesterday, is exactly the opposite yeah. of uh, what you're expected to do because I'm hearing more, I'm lucky because uh, most places where I teach is not like that, at least at the moment. But in general, you're expected to deliver a very precise uh, program of your teaching and to deliver results. Oh, oh, also, can I cut you? Yeah, or no, no, yeah, yeah. perfect. What, what uh, I, please uh, join the conversation. I'm also, it's in your church. I, I every time uh, afraid about this. When you start a research, you have to give the, the end. <laughs> we will find this. Yeah. And if you already know what you will find, this is not research anymore, because the results were not open. Yeah. So uh, this is a starting point. Uh, how do you prepare for uh, being able to improvise? Uh, it's not an easy answer. We were trying to find an answer during these days by uh, meeting uh, with teachers that wrote their specific approach and to um, to get closer to this idea of being ready uh, to to act in a specific given situation that you don't know about. So it all starts with, I think, with our bodies being there, being um, perceptive, 
uh, being able to understand what's happening. And that means that as designers, uh, especially visual designers, we are very visual. We tend to focus on uh, this part of our senses. But for instance, uh, vision is only in front of us. And we tend to forget the periphery, which is very important. Something is happening here, just at the limit of our uh, perceptual visual fields. And maybe it's very interesting, but we focus on what is in front of us. Or maybe uh, listening, um, uh, the hearing sense is a sphere. So we can find information from all around us. Imagine if you enter a space and you listen to the space, first of all before saying this room is white and has some gray things on the wall. You can also yes. uh, walk in it and hear the sounds or the voices of people who are already there. So this changes the approach. And, uh, I think there are one very strong sense you see it with babies when you go from one room to the other has to be with energy in the room because they wake up when you change rooms. Uh, so it's a, uh, and they wake up very, very strongly. So uh, I think the energy is also a part of this, uh, of this perception. Uh, yes, and also perception, we tend to consider the traditional five senses, but mm -hmm. it's very limiting. First of all, some senses are very strongly linked to each other, so it doesn't work to separate them, like uh, smell and taste are yeah. very connected. And secondly, we are, have other senses like the perception ourselves, the perception like proprioception is our relation to movement in space. They are also senses and we gather a lot of information from them. And, we, and this has to do with the beautiful thing when you start to uh, pay attention to how your body works, is that you gather an immense quantity of information from it. You all the time, for instance, I, I put my arm here, it's how out of my visual field, but I know exactly where it is. And if I want to bring my hand closer to my head, I don't have to look at it. Everybody knows, it's not like me. Everybody knows how to do that. Uh, I once saw um, a documentary about a woman who has lost her proprioception and she cannot walk mm. because she doesn't know where her foot is at yeah. the time. So she needs someone, uh, some support in order to walk. It's not that their legs, her legs doesn't mm. don't work. It's just that she doesn't mm. know where, where they are. So um, I think that the most important invitation is to cultivate our presence and our senses. Um, and this is uh, the only thing that we can do before. Of course, we can study, but we we. we enter a space with all the information that we have gathered somewhere else, they might not apply in that specific situation. So they might be useful or not. It's not that I'm proposing to abandon other forms of studying, but uh, to say, okay, now what counts is something else. We have to look at other uh, aspects of our experience. Uh, experience is also very essential in education since like John Dewey in the 20s was proposing that education came through experience. But of course, not all experiences are educational. <laughs> it really depends on, um, on how we approach them. And experience has to, do, has to do with doing something and being aware about it. It's not something that's... Uh, so having a kind of reflection, uh, say, okay, we did this and this happened. And of course, by doing it repeatedly, uh, it becomes part, we say it's embodied, it becomes part of us. It's not something that we have to, um, I think, uh, can you mention something that you have learned very well and you don't have, don't have to look for it, but it's always available to you. Like, of course, this is how, exactly. You learn how to ski. Exactly, it's okay. Exactly. I learned how to ride a bike. Yeah, yeah. And uh, can you can you think about, about other exp uh, experiences? Work. Yeah, this way. 
Uh, exactly. You don't have to relearn. You don't have to say, okay, now my arm goes like this, and then the other arm goes like this. Uh, this kind of learning, uh, there's a, um, a man who died a few couple of decades ago, whose name was Moshe Feldenkrais. He's the founder of a method for uh, body awareness. And he called this organic learning. He said, all the important things, we learn them like this. Uh, so I think that in order to improvise, we have to have a lot of organic learning, which doesn't, doesn't have to always pass from, from memory to say, OK, I remember in this case, I have to use the information, but it allows you to act in a much more immediate way. Um, and I, I think the, the language has something to do with this. You have a long time of learning, and then after you, you express you. Yeah, exactly. You and there's a, a very different uh, kind Moment, of, of yeah. language that you have between your native language that you learned in, in a more yeah. organic way and other languages that came later so they are not as embodied as your main language. Um, yeah, but it's, I, I think it's a step also by the other language who, uh, before you were in church and you are in, in a kind of uh, every time stress, you know what time, uh, uh, at one time, start to be automatically. Yeah. Is, you don't, don't think about this uh, is an expression. Oh yes, of course, over time it can yeah. it can happen with me. With French it's not happening now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> English is, yeah. is better. So, uh, and uh, another thing that came out, these two cars are similar, being wrong and failing. falling or failing. Um, we have to accept this possibility. Improvising means that we have to be open to the possibility that something doesn't work. And uh, because we are not planning and we are not giving a, ourselves a specific objective, but we are trying to do what is possible within that, that given situation. Um, I, I'm trying to apply this in my teaching in Rubino, and basically, this semester that just ended, we built the course together with students. And on the last day, each one of us had to choose a, a word that represented something that they didn't want to do anymore in design, or something that instead we want to uh, adopt from now on. In my case, I said, uh, I, I want to stop being right. Because if you're the, te the teacher, you have to be right all the time. <laughs> You have to, to know, you have to be able to answer any question, n'importe quoi. Uh, if they want to know something, they expect you to know. <laughs> and so I, Michel Serre speaks uh, very good about this. I say, now uh, when I make a conference or I make a, a course, um, I give the title and 10 minutes after my students know more as what I know with the uh, Google. So we are not, it's not any possibility now to uh, to be only the transmission of a, of a sapere. No, it's, a, it's very much about being a facilitator yeah. of something that can happen. Yeah. But that, then that, mean, that means that you have to be in tune with the specific situation, because if you arrive um, without form of openness towards the situation, uh, it doesn't work. Oh, can I can ask you, can you pick a, one, 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 Transformation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Transformation of knowledge. Um, but transformation happens on, on many levels. One is the transformation that we can do with ourselves by practicing, and the other is what was it trying to say by transformation of knowledge? To be able to take something that we know that belongs to our memory and our experience, and to see if it can become something else in that. But also being able to uh, let go if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This is another <laughs> very <laughs> difficult thing to do. So I finished my first round of words. So if there's 
And if you want to add something also in Italian? No, okay. Does it relate to your experience? Did it happen to you to Yeah, obviously. So especially the failure. <laughs> and how do you like when you can like learn faster? To to fail is I mean important. It would be better to um don't say in our mind we, we always want to, to win, but I think it's the best way to learn faster. That's it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good kind of bracket mm -hmm. this fail, fail better. Yeah. No, again. fail, fail again. I, fail again, again, again. I have the first story of my <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was also obsessed with that phrase very much because uh, well, of course, it's a difficult way to learn, especially if we learn, we are used to learning, okay, we have to be approved at every step, so there's no space for failure. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we are, no, but we've learned how to walk through failing <laughs> very often. Yeah, and this is, I, I think, really important because our society of uh, zero, zero default, zero, no, no accident, no, uh, uh, of perfection, not so the, the Swiss one or, or the Protestant one, yeah. uh, is a society who this uh, point of experimentation because experimentation mean uh, accept the failing. Uh, if you make experiment and you don't accept the failing, mm -hmm. you cannot. Uh, it is interesting. And our society is based on this, uh, not have uh, failure. Yeah, yeah. So it's how can we, at the same time, uh, have this uh, experimentality and surely also not. But when you work in South America and uh, this kind of country, you, you see how the year she is absolutely changing. And this hope, mm -hmm. uh, because if it happens something, it happens something, and uh, sure, it's the responsibility of the designer to do that, but it's not the responsibility of all the institution, all the structure to say it's impossible that something happened negative, uh, or the construction, also in the, in the, in the communication uh, of marketing, who uh, chooses this because uh, sure, here it's not an obstacle. And this, this afraidness about something who can shock, something who can uh, not be perceived correctly, uh, makes it in the end we come to something who is uh, dogmatic and mono, mono structured. But it's interesting that he say we always want to win. And it is mm -hmm. a little bit strange, no? but it is not, uh, obviously it is not uh, a, a game. But this idea that we have to win. Yeah, I think it's is, uh, it's a game because especially in design, we is very competitive. Yeah. So and I mean, sure. um, from my my education uh, at school, nobody tells you. Don't you worry, you, you have lost a year. No, 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 yeah, but, but it's but but no. a concept of win that is a, a strange concept. You have yeah. to, to go on, you have we, to we, we go on. But the idea of win, no, but it's not a, a critic. Yeah, it obviously. is something that is a, 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 the, the one she say before is a, is a perception. Yeah. You have the perception no, that you a, have to win. It's not a perception, it's a structure of it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. With, exactly. And we start with five years. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. Who are so this com internal competition? Yeah, you have to, you have to be the first. You have to be the the, the yeah. more good. Yeah. They they expected that you are more intelligent, more uh, prepared, and it is all. And the, and the teacher, I don't know in Italy, but in France, yeah. they really uh, uh, the piece, they. Uh, yeah, yeah. Take on to say uh, this is the good, this is the bad, yeah. uh, this yeah. works, this, yeah, yeah. this is better. As, uh, so this competition is really, I think, uh, a basic structure of our our thinking. Exactly. And, it's, it's, yeah. uh, but it's it's not accidentally a basic structure of our thinking. Uh, it's, uh, uh, 
Vera, I was absolutely sorry. You were <laughs> <laughs> because um, just a little bit Foucault by the side, it's governmentality and it's, a, it's not accidentally that we are forced to think more in concurrence than in solidarity. But it's necessary to connect improvisation, uh, attention, uh, and 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 uh, coll collaborative uh, working formats. And it's really something we have to learn again. Yeah. The socialization process. Dominique, excuse me. Exactly. I, I think that uh, the competition is a, is a, is the fruit of uh, of um, lobotomization of the school uh, of um, the educational system. I don't know if uh, if it is correct. Can I, say it? Uh, I can say if I can say it in French, then, then I can be very. Um, uh, en fait, je pense que vraiment la, la compétition. On a été lobotomisé dès l'enfance dans dans cette idée de, de compétition et euh, d'accumulation de savoir, concurrence entre les uns et les autres. Donc, du coup, on accumule le savoir, on ne veut pas le partager, on euh, ne veut pas le partager parce qu'il faut que l'on soit meilleur que les autres. Et il y a toujours cette, euh, ce, cette polarité. Quand il y a une polarité. Euh, oui. Vas-y, Dominique, excuse-moi. Et il y a toujours une polarité entre le meilleur et le cancre, le meilleur et le cancre, et jusqu'à l'âge adulte, on continue de, de répéter, de reproduire le, le même chemin. Et euh, en fait, ce que, que j'ai trouvé bien dans, dans la formation avec le Master Design Innovation, c'était qu'on était dans, dans une autre manière de, de former avec euh, Inke, Julio et, et les experts, vous, Ruti, qui étaient euh, venus à Madagascar, c'était qu'on est tous là au même niveau et... Euh, on n'est pas en compétition les uns contre les autres, mais on est amené à accumuler tous un savoir et ramener ces savoirs sur la table et les partager ensuite et, et voir ensemble où on a, où on a, où on a fait l'erreur et euh, on apprend ensemble, on s'élève ensemble en fait. Voilà. Un peu ça, que... Juste Dominique, ça, ça veut dire qu'on place, et pour moi ça c'est un concept de base de tous les cours que je donne, je place au centre de mon cours ce que je ne sais pas. Et pas, et pas ce que je veux transmettre, ce qui est autre chose. À la rigueur, je transmets, mais je me mets au même niveau que les étudiants par le fait que je me confronte à quelque chose que je ne sais pas. Et ça, je pense que c'est une base pédagogique presque. Hein. Oui. Après, euh, c'est horizontalité. Est-ce que le mot innovation, tu vois, je suis en train de, de, de réfléchir, master innovation, euh, dans ces mots innovation, euh, ben, moi personnellement, il y a toujours quelque chose qui, qui me dérange parce que ça fait complètement partie euh, de cette logique euh, compétitive et de devoir innover à tout prix, etc. Est-ce que l'appeler master transformation, ça ne serait pas plus, euh, plus adéquat euh, ça, ça non, je, suis, je, je suis totalement, totalement d'accord mmh. avec toi. Après, les politiques subventionnent l'innovation et ne subventionnent pas la transformation. Mais, non, non, par rapport à ce qu'on est en train de dire, on y est ouais. toujours, euh, est toujours là. We, we switch again in English. English. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, thanks, Dominique. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's very interesting about what you were saying, because in, in this improvisation summer school, we had a meeting with the French social sociologue. Mm -hmm. Anne Kevin, mm -hmm. who studied the uh, Ecole Mutuelle, which ex uh, had existed in France in the uh, 19th century. And it was a model uh, to educate the, the, the children of the poor. And uh, at the beginning, it was very supported by the industry because they said, okay, we will give basic uh, education to everyone in a very simple way. And it was based on the idea that uh, so-called better students would not compete with the others, but help mm -hmm. the others. And you could be better in one subject and mm -hmm. not in the other. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically, the, the teaching wasn't done. There were no school books. Uh, there was all the information was owned by, by the school, by everyone. So there was also no social difference in the fact that you could buy or not buy the, the books or have someone at home that would help you or not. Mm -hmm. So that would put every... In the end, this education was abandoned because it was too 
efficient. <laughs> and uh, too, too the children, so yeah, <laughs> there was too many people didn't want anymore to be to work in the fields or be factory workers. And this was considered so basically the public school decided to be based on the teaching of the Catholic schools instead of this model that was very efficient. But it was actually imported from England in a perspective of efficiency. But it, and it ended up uh, being a system used by worker unions to educate themselves. Uh, and it was abandoned by the public system. So it's, it's interesting to hear that this competition yeah. is always there. And uh, as Anna said, talking about innovation is probably not the right thing because some things are, especially in education, are there. Since yes, I'm sure. If you look at also at other cultures, yeah. you can find, find plenty of old good models. Only we don't want to hear about them. But this is only uh, this is the, the, the focus of our school because we don't have the idea to discover something that we don't know or we will do will know in the future. But uh, the idea is also to understand and to come back in the focus of the things that uh, we don't know because they are not in the mainstream uh, of the communication, of the teaching, uh, of the other things. So there is a lot of things that is, the difference with the, with the Triennale is this, it is not uh, something that we have to uh, discover, but something that sometimes is behind us or uh, near to us, but we don't use, or we don't know, or we don't trust me, so we don't have to. Okay, so uh, do we have time for a second round of cards? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's true. Oops. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> This one. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I collect them? Uh, okay, we were talking about this yesterday. <laughs> okay, so some of them uh, came already out, like awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, awareness is a tool that we can use. Uh, we can basically learn to use it. It's like to, as Susanna was saying, to bring a light to a specific aspect of it, an experience. So, uh, for instance, if I'm designing something that has to do with the space, decide to focus on the sound of the space, of the materials, and so on. Or the specific kind of relationships that are happening between people. So it still has to do to teaching ourselves to be aware of what happens. Yeah. And this is has to be seen as a tool, not as an end in itself. Yeah. And um, opening maybe was opening was not the right word to use, but being open to to what can happen. And I yeah, think it's the same time opening something, yeah. yeah. opening a concept, opening a, a ideology, opening yeah. as the beginning of the construction. Okay. Is the uh, precondition of possibility mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you don't are not open um, if you don't create a context where certain kinds of things happen uh, the possibility is very limited you cannot leave only space for what you really want to happen uh, and this makes me think of a lot of processes that are apparently participation but they are very manipulative yeah. because they are basically ways to make you feel that you belong to this process, but in the end, the oh, process yeah. is directed to a certain outcome. Oh, I, I, I suppose that every one of, my, of yeah. us has <laughs> met. In, in your experience of students, did you find the situation that you expected to be open and in the end it was not? The other people or our in, in, in particular context? Both. Something that you realize that you observed? Uh, sort of uh, uh, 
Maybe when you have a big expectation. Yeah. And um, it's like you try to, to give uh, another chance to a um, topic or a signature, maybe. And like you, you go um, against yourself because you say to yourself, I don't like it, I don't want to study that. or I hate this teacher because I think it's not good, but you gave possibilities. Like, it could be good for me, I'm spending my time, so I should, um, yeah. <laughs> Use this, uh, this yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, but in the end, it, 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 seems, it seems to me that the situation was not very open to you. You have no. to do it because it was part of your course you know, we're not given the chance to modify okay and this is unfortunately very frequent uh, happens very often and i know it's also linked to this idea that if you have to predict the results you don't, cannot leave many options to the students because if they, at the end of the year someone tells you oh but they didn't mm -hmm. do it enough awesome. because you left them too, too much time to research <laughs> in the end someone will say that you're not Bring your results. So oh, no, not efficient. You're not efficient. So this is the <laughs> and this comes to the unpredictability, which should be central in teaching. And as we said at the beginning, if you already know what we want to know, <laughs> is uh, so. For instance, uh, this year we had no idea of the subject that we would talk about during the course. It was not me teaching. I, we decided a subject, and for the following week, a group of people, and I was just one of them, would bring a presentation linked to the thing that we have chosen. And uh, that means that I had no idea what they would come up with. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> and it was also very interesting to me because I realized that maybe a term, I had given a cer certain value to that word, and someone came up with a totally, totally different, different, different uh, perspective on the same. So, uh, ah, okay, so this can also mean that. Uh, that means that next time I cannot approach the same subject in the same way. This is, uh, I, I think, one of the energy who is often coming from the student uh, to say, okay, I, I give something, and the, uh, like, uh, you, you try to to turn it, to uh, bring it. Uh, that's a, a very strong energy mm -hmm. in the school, uh, who is from time to time in the studio uh, more difficult because in the studio you have to go together uh, to, uh, to, to, a, to, a, to a point. In, in the school you have often the, in the way of this concurrence to say, okay, I have a subject, I have to find something, uh, something original, and I don't go linear. I, I turn and turn the definition of the of the subject. It's one of the strategies, with positive or not. So. Yeah. Uh, no, no. And going back to unpredictable, it makes me think that design is also very much influenced by this industrial history that it has, whereby designing means being able to uh, deliver predictable outcomes. Mm -hmm. And as long as this is the approach, there's not good. Um, many, uh, working as a designer, most of the time, I'm expected to say, OK, this is good to be like this and be printed exactly for that date and be perfect. And in the end, of course, nothing goes like this because the client is not ready. There's a problem in printing because the paper is not available and so on. But you have to pretend that all the process is predictable. Yeah. And you have to, to be there to guarantee, to make them feel well, because as a designer, you're the one to, that has to guarantee for the, for the process, which is, of course, totally beyond your control, but you have to pretend <laughs> it is. So um, I think it's, it's also a kind of cultural uh, work to do, to say, OK, this is just one thing that design can do. Of course, in, there's a moment where you have done all the mm -hmm. experimentation and this thing has to take a specific form and arrive. But if you, if you think that predictability is all that design can deliver, is 
Predictability for me, I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking, yeah, of course, uh, this link to nature, but uh, to, uh, to industry, but I think more the link to, to nature now and uh, to non-human. And uh, of course, uh, nature and non-human is unpredictable. <laughs> That's why we are in the situation we are. And so if we don't uh, put this, uh, this ingredient of unpredictability of also our own uh, body, our own health, we don't know if we die tomorrow or if our cells are starting to degenerate, it's really, we don't know anything. I mean, we, nothing is predictable, actually. <laughs> so spend our whole a life trying to be okay, but yeah. everything's going to be fine. <laughs> but uh, this fate of accepting that nature <laughs> to be defined, of course, is unpredictable. Then we should also change the way we teach. We are we are also facing, and we ourselves are the subject. You know, the also. subject, the subject, yeah. the object, everything yeah. is unpredictable. Yeah. So and this is us exactly here. Exactly. <laughs> well, not mobility. Um, that can. This is usually something very. That has to do with our intimacy, our private life, and so on. Mm -hmm. How can vulnerability be brought into the public? Mm -hmm. Collect or fragility. I mean, uh, you, know, like, you know, the Japanese, you know, what they do, uh, the fragility is at the basis of their design. Uh, in our culture, it's much less like this, it's much more Eastern culture. The vulnerability, the fragility is part of. Uh, but we are in, in the Western world, uh, as we already said, it's not part of this, so we should also integrate. Yeah. Also as an attitude, mm -hmm. so as designers, what does it mean to be vulnerable? Mm -hmm. To be open to failure, for instance, mm -hmm. to be yeah. open to not know something, uh, to uh, the complexity of the relationship with other people. And because if you're not vulnerable, if you will not accept all the information that is there, yeah. because you will protect yourself mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. Because your idea, you already had your idea, and the context tells you, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> you should change it. And you're not vulnerable, so you, you don't see it because you're attached to it like this, mm -hmm. and you won't let go. And so this is a very difficult so, thing. And this, this is, is very... really, I, I think, one of the most uh, the negative points of the design. Yeah. Mm. They know before what they will do and uh, mm. cannot change with the context. I, I think this is uh, the relearning of vulnerability is surely one of the, uh, the, the concept of this non sapperian to mm, say, absolutely. okay, we, we have an idea, the yes, first idea, but yeah. we accept that the new parameters change us and uh, bring us in questioning and not in uh, knowledge and all this. Vulnerability yeah. sometimes yeah. Yeah. sometimes is this uh, synonymous of weakness. Uh, so you have to be strong and not to be weakness. So vulnerable, you 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 are in difficult to express your vulnerability because uh, uh, this is something that is seen like negative, like uh, you are one who don't want to stay into, and this is not uh, a positive predestruction. Vera? Yes, Susanna, I go with you. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, but th this, is, uh, this is also a construction, so um, yeah. the connotation of vulnerability could also be sensibility. And it's uh, it's uh, it's about changing the connotation, and I think what we have said also the word innovation and so on these are all words which are filled um, uh, with interest, and I think it's it's really about deconfiscation of terms and concepts of thinking, and this this is the part of unlearning. I think what is interesting is how can we teach and train improvisation in collective and individual formats? So how much um, input do you need to have a kind of partition to then play together? And we all know these moments when improvisation functions, how this is uh, uh, a very positive collective experience. 
um, uh, that one hand goes to the other. And uh, I think it's very interesting to train uh, to train this um, uh, without losing a, a personal statement. So it's not a, a flow without knowledge or a flow without the any position it's the other way around it's a, a intuition which is uh, which profits from all experience um, and knowledge which is uh, accumulated and i think this is very important because some reactions on scuola de non sapere was like um yeah we have we we survived uh trump we survived all these people who who shit on what is knowing <laughs> and uh, vulgarized and I know that in French this is sometimes a positive word but I I don't like it not at all <laughs> because I think vul it's not vulgar it's accessible it's shared but it's the vulgarization is very dangerous and also, uh, Ivan Illich in his book, Discoding Society, Society uh, Vulnerability, it was really the, the, one of the starting points uh, of uh, the acknowledgement uh, that people should have uh, uh, for going towards uh, uh, a logic of peace uh, and not war and warrior, etc. Et mm -hmm. And um, connected to what Vera was saying, in fact, we have to ask, we are asking ourselves how to teach this predisposition, mm -hmm. this attitude. And so I, 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 um, I, I was reading a, a, a memoir uh, on vulnerability this year, so I can share it with you. It was yeah. it had the citation du jury, and uh, it was oh, really, really right, uh, right uh, one of my students. Yeah. So I follow her and all of them on this subject. So yeah. If you're interested, I can yeah, share yeah. it. Yeah. To me, it was very important to meet this text uh, that I found in this book, A Slow Reader uh, collection was printed uh, in the Netherlands a few years ago. And it's by a, an artist who works in the social context very much, whose name is Jean Van Heeswijk. And the text is called Preparing for, for the Not Yet. Mm -hmm. So she never mentions the word improvisation, but what she says is absolutely included with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Not Yet was one of the cards that were <laughs> was picked. And now I, I will try to make a connection with this. So basically, she discusses her position as an artist who intervenes in a social complex and how she, the, she enters in a special, certain situation. This happens also to designers a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you enter from a position of the artist that takes the decision, of course, yes. And a very important thing that she says, uh, she she starts by saying, I, lately I talk a lot about training for the, the not yet. So the not yet in her case is the collection. We haven't met, we have to meet how to, do I prepare to be ready to, to work in, the, in that situation? And, uh, and she says, what is critical to that is being able to let go of some of your own subjectivity, to put your subjectivity at risk, without losing your position, as well as others say. So it's not that you disappear. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're always that person with her, their experience and knowledge and so on. But if you immediately you know, as a designer, you will always want to fill the void. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do something here. <laughs> but if you do it too, too early or too fast or whatever, and she also said, what is important in, the, in that learning process is allowing for one's own ideas and even ideals to be withheld momentarily. Waiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't put this word, but waiting is exactly a mm -hmm. key word yeah. for improvisation. Because if you decide to mm, early is. too early, yeah. you didn't consider what's happening. And then your cameras are the expert of waiting and not knowing, so we have to learn. That's one of the, the statements I was doing in the book also, so they can teach us a lot. But the, it, it needs time, it needs all mm -hmm. the process that you were describing mm -hmm. yesterday. It's not that just, oh, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is very, because we are told that we as designers have a very special knowledge that we bring it to other situations. 
Of course, we, we learned something. It's not to say that we don't have, but is it what we need now? Do we have to do something uh, yes, a little bit like the first things uh, we talked about with uh, Jean-Pierre, no, Marie-Pierre? Uh, yeah, yeah. Des apprendre. Des uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Forgot, but don't forget the knowledge you have, okay. in your experience, but uh, try to re reconnect with the, with the real experience in the moment. That's the uh, concept of martial art. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. There's another excerpt that I would like to read. This is an exercise, this good holding, that we are just beginning to learn. Most of us are bad at just allowing for things to emerge because we are so ingrained in the capitalist productivist system that we don't know how to withhold, how not to produce reactions, a surplus of the objects and ideas. Withholding is not about becoming passive. In fact, it is very active and, can, and also can be very creative because it is reassembling oneself in relation to others or through others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't have an easy answer how to teach this, but <laughs> I try to teach it myself. <laughs> it's but a Sylvia, if it is the ending, I think you are you are in, in a closed system, and you have now to open the system. If I can say, mm -hmm. and open the system is to ask each of you to take a new sentence inside of this process. Okay. I, I, I see it because in other case you you make improvisation with element you have uh, anticipated your your choice <laughs> elements and you you just say okay I, I organize in a free way and who is very important I, I, I think it's uh, but for me it's the second step is to say collectively, and we we go up this element, and uh, what happens is if Daniela take a, a expression with something explosive. In but the you system. want to bring words, or you want to discuss the words that I brought? No, new words. Okay, so uh, and Dominic can and uh, Vera and suggest okay. new words. Uh, can also propose words. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to be cool, is it if you clear? have a, a word that you already want to add, so we should write new words and yeah, pick yeah, up yeah, our yeah, words. Or not, but uh, what if you have a word that you add, a, a to more add open it. system to say, uh, now you, we go over your concept, uh, your, uh, your, how can you say, your uh, syntax of this is a syntax, huh? and you, you improvise. So, well, uh, uh, improvise is based also uh, on so, methods. So, yeah, and so, so the technology, like, and uh, you bring new elements on it, shirts. Sure, uh, and now, when uh, you open the system and say, okay, what mm -hmm. happened? We make a step towards you... radical improvis improvisation. So, yeah. <laughs> which words would you like to add? Uh, who, who is the young, the is, youngster? Is radical, it's <laughs> not so radical. It is also it's, uh, after the marriage. It's part of the marriage. Is it, I think the two first steps are very important. And now the, the terminology we bring will be in contact with this yeah, element. And it's not uh, absolutely free. You can use the other side of these cards if you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can own yeah. yeah. Oh, because yeah. she has to walk with this. <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> I will add that to my list. Can we add a few other words that we, we didn't go through? I think we are. This. And here I have some other. You see that? Yeah. You have a word to add? Uh, life is rhythm, so you need um, you need uh, improvisation and non-improvisation. If not, you you won't feel the difference. So it's like breathe. Uh, it's uh, inspire, expire. You have to have the two principles. Of course. <laughs> uh, no, I understand what you say. Yes, of course, we cannot improvise in the whole process, otherwise nothing happens. But it's yeah. probably something very important at, at the beginning. Yeah. 
it's, it's I think in, in the general process it's, it's a, don't, don't make a dogma that was uh, what I wanted to say <laughs> yes of course it is but it was uh, a contribution within the system it's, it's surely it's sure that the, the system is made of many different contributions that interact in different ways. Uh, it, it's just interesting this relation between fixed and open structures. It's it's, it's, it's it, so that's why my 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 input would be um, uh, would be the rhythm, which means or uh, you have both you have both elements, and, and because of the combination. Um, uh, it's strong because all the principles are, have both uh, both sides. Yeah. Okay. So actually, okay. it has to do with being able to facilitate a project, and in this fa facilitation attitude, moving from open structure to something which is more predictable when you need that. But again, it. You have to, to to know exactly when to do it, but not, you don't know it before. This is why why I insist on improvisation. It's not that you will say after two hours we will switch to this, because mm -hmm. if in two hours we are not at that stage of the process, uh, maybe we need need to do it later or earlier. So uh, it's not abandoning every structure, but being continually. Actually, uh, Anna was using the word listening. Listening. <laughs> it's, it's listening, uh, Remy last week used the word um, attention instead of concentration. Concentration is uh, reducing uh, variables and attention, and which needs radical presence, uh, is uh, to, to, uh, to be open for all informations and to integrate them. So exactly. maybe this is the best, better word, uh, attention. Mm -hmm. yes. so, is in French, porter attention yeah. is also uh, positional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. attention. Si, yeah. yeah. uh, this is also the relation in between you as conceptor and the other. Well, let's say if you are the, uh, for instance, a teacher, we were talking about. Uh, you are responsible for creating the context. So it's not that you disappear, yeah. you're still there. And you uh, create the context, and if the context is open enough, things will happen that have some values of meaning. Mm -hmm. Domi, you have a uh, nom, you have quelque chose? Uh, Imprevisibilité, imprevis peut-être? Imprevisibilité. OK. okay. Which is different from unpredictable because it's unpredictable. No, more it's about... a little bit yeah, more focused on visible, but that's more a French uh, okay. particularity. Yeah? Uh, has something to do with projection and uh, okay. unprevisibility. Than the future. You cannot project. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I think it's very interesting uh, this. Uh, Vecchio concepto spaziale di progettazione, eh? mm -hmm. uh, with the base of, uh, of uh, our way to, uh, to, to, uh, to design also, to say we, we have an intention, and we have an anticipation of something, and we can uh, construct all the elements that this, what it don't exist, will will happen. And improvisation uh, means that the, uh, the, the or imprevisibility, uh, what you don't see, so elements who change the focus. Yeah. And things that maybe, if you give time, if you allow time, yeah. these things will emerge. Uh -huh. So uh, I think that improvisation doesn't mean that we abandon every structure, but we have this attention or with this presence that includes a lot of things so that you realize that something that you forgot you didn't consider is still there 
and has to be taken into consideration in order to, to move to the next step. Yeah. And this is, I don't know what's your experience as, as a designer, this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Because you have this structure, okay, we have to take this decision, but then we are people, and the group of people who participate in the process, maybe someone didn't uh, feel they were included, and then they will create a problem every step, following yeah. step of the process. But, but I think more you are in a, in a white box, more this don't happen. So our way to make the conception in our studios, behind sort of computers, and all this uh, bring us to not so many uh, imprevisibility uh, as if you are in the reality. If you are in the reality, come back more. Uh, a, and this is, uh, I, can I propose something? Yeah. Uh, C'est rendibilité. Serendibilité. Serendibilité. Ah, serendibilité. 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 